tutorial for this Gantt chart um, that is basically built well okay so normally Gantt charts uh, and if you're not familiar with a Gantt chart, a Gantt chart is, is, is basically something that is used in project management to keep track of schedule. They're used when you've got a bunch of tasks to do and those tasks are interrelated. So for example, like if you're building a house, you have to lay the foundation first and then you can do the framing. Um, and, and, and so when there's relationships like that between tasks of what has to happen first, what happens, happens next. And, and when you've got a bunch of tasks that have to be uh, done in order to complete a complex, um, project, then, uh, something like a Gantt chart is nice to have. And normally Gantt charts are built for, um, you know, long-term projects. So something that's going to take like two months, something that's going to take, uh, three years, you know, whatever, some, something like that, right? Um, and I have a, a similar type of a, uh, a spreadsheet uh, on this website that is, you know, built for that. Um, and if you need something like that, it, you can look on this website to 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 get um, and look at that that spreadsheet to to to, to uh, you know for that for that type of a long term project. But this Gantt chart. Uh, it's and I don't recall ever seeing one built for a one-day event, but that is what this is built for. So, like if you have a wedding, or you have like a catering event, or you have you know you're putting on some big concert. I know that's not too many people that do that part of it, but um, you know that. But that's an example of if you've got you know, or maybe you've got a company a party that you need to to put on, right? Um, or you know, but but basically, you've got a, a one-day event that you have to plan, and some of these things can vary. So, if you're planning an event, even if it's the same type of, of an event, say take a wedding for example. If a, a, a wedding for a hundred people is different from a wedding for twenty-five, right? Especially if you're catering, and 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 you know, there's going to be some similar components, but you know, you might have to bring different equipment. You might have to bring more people. You might have to bring you know, it might take longer to load out, right? So, so these kind of ideas are, you know, these templates, you can set up templates based on how many people are you expect at this event. And you can um, customize this for each type of event. Say you are a caterer and, and you have similar type things and, and say you want to put together a template for a, a party of 2,500. You want to put together a template for 100 people. You know, and and you want to actually go through your items, and you know, even a, a load like you know this first example here, a load load in the catering supplies, right? That's you know, say it's two hours for a certain number of people. It's going to be five hours for a different event. You can go in and, and customize this, set up, set it up for each individual event. Yes, you could. I, I did set this up for catering event, and again, I, I this does not include all of the steps that a caterer has to put in their um, uh, uh, list of tasks to do here uh, for their event, but it's just uh, something to give uh, an example of, uh, to give an idea of how the, 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 this tool works. And, and um, you know, so even if it were a caterer, they could come in and customize this and add things, subtract things, do whatever they need to do. But, but if it's a different type of event, you can completely revamp this to what you need for your event. And you can list, I mean, just, you know, almost a thousand tasks. It's, it's, you've got plenty of room to add any tasks you need to uh, in here. And um, then... So once you list all your tasks here, and we'll go through this more a little more in detail, but I want to go through these columns first here. So this is basically these this light blue. Anywhere you see a light blue, like here, 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 this is where you can input anything. You see a dark blue like this. This is all calculated. Everything else is calculated. All this dark blue over here, this pink, all these little bars. This is all updated automatically, and we'll go through this in more detail. But um, so anyway, this is where you put your tasks. Uh, right here. So, for example, you know, you've got uh, to uh, put the table settings with the salt and pepper shakers. You got to put that out right, and Misty is going to do that. Okay. This is where you assign what person is doing what. Okay. Tom is going to take care of the buffet equipment, uh, the tongs. All right. Uh, Jake is going to take care of the chafing dishes. All right. Um, 
And then for each of these tasks, uh, you've got a duration that you set here. So for example, this is saying that, that uh, 15 minutes, Jake has 15 minutes to do this, this task right here. And before uh, he can do that task, um, let's come back to these these three right here. These this whole column here where it talks about the predecessors, controlling step, um, type, and lag time. All this, all three columns. I'll come back to this. Okay. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what is this little completion task here. So that's just letting you know what's done. So if I check it, you'll notice this is going to turn uh, uh, gray. So if I check it, yeah, it turns gray. And if I uncheck it, it goes back to blue. All right. So. Bef All right, so again, before I hit these, let's talk a little about what is this time scale up here. So this time scale is letting you know that you can set these at, you can see I have it at 10. And so what that's doing is it's going 8 o'clock, 8.10, 8.20, 8.30, 8.40, 8.50. Now, if for you, you might say, well, that's great, but I need it for every five minutes, right? So if I select five, you'll see it's going to all update and say, okay, 8.00. Eight, 805, 810, 815, 820, 825, 830. See, it's counting by fives. And then, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can set it down to a minute if you want, and it'll track it minute by minute. You know, some events are like that. You've got to know, you got to keep it on track minute by minute. All right. And then, so you can also set it for any 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 one of these. You can set it at 15 minutes. You see how it automatically all pulls all the data together and, and just completely uh, changes all this, puts the bars where they're supposed to go. Okay, so I think you get the idea on, on what you can do there. You can switch this up. All, you can put it all the way up to eight-hour time scales uh, for every eight hours. Um, and then uh, the next one here is talking about what you want to emphasize. Do you want it now zero? If I, you put zero here, this is going to emphasize hours. So you see how you've got a bold hours. So eight, nine, there's like a line here, 10 o'clock, there's a line, you see at 11, 12, 13, uh, one o'clock, two o'clock. So if I, like, for example, if I put it at say eight, uh, excuse me, if I put it at 30, then you can see now what's emphasized are the, the, the 30 minute mark. So eight 30 with a line, nine 30 lines right up in here, 10 30, 11 30. Okay. So that's, what's happening there. You, you can set this uh, all the way any minute you want. I'll just leave it at zero for now. And you can see everything's going to update automatically when you do all this. Um, okay, so now let's go back to the... All right, so if you've uh, ever done, worked with anything called a Gantt chart, that's what this is. It's, it's basically a project management tool. It helps you to keep track of a bunch of tasks that have to be done uh, that are all interrelated tasks, like, like I was talking about earlier with the foundation, the framing, and stuff. And so um, that's and 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 the way that you tell the, let this tool know what tasks depend on which other tasks is is using these three columns right here. So basically, let's take this first one as an example. So for for the tables, um, to place the tables per the layout plan, this is uh, step number two. And you can see that the number two is here. And, um, and when you come over here, this controlling step, this is talking about uh, where it says controlling step number one. What that means is that in order for step number two to be done, step number one has to be done first. So this one right here corresponds to this one right here. All right, and, and you can change that here. This is where you select where, what what is the controlling step. Um, now, so like for example, uh, let's say the table settings and the table cloths. Right now, these are depending on task two being done. So I come right over here to this task right here. And you can see that it is currently being controlled at step two. But if I if I change this to one, this is gonna pull this right back to, to this point up in here. So let me select one. You can see it's pulling it right back over here to this point and, and lining right up with the end of one right there. Okay, and then um, when I, if I did a start to start, all right, so the FS and the SS, what that means is these are again, industry terms that are used whenever people 
you know, build Gantt charts and, but finish to start, uh, that, an example of that, again, going back to the house analogy, it's, you know, you, in order to start the, the framing, you have to finish the foundation. And so that, that would be this type of finish to, to start relationship, a start to start, um, might be that, um, you know, say that, uh, you have already, um, done your framing and now you can start your mechanical work, your plumbing, and your electrical all at the same time. And uh, that those are like a start to start. Those could be like set up to be like a start to start relationship. Um, okay, so but a lot of times. Um, so anyway, those two options are available. I'll leave it at finish to start. But let me actually select start to start so you see what happens. So if I let, uh, select start to start, that's going to pull this way back over here to say that basically this task can start whenever one starts. So that you can see that this task right here is starting when one starts right here. Okay, uh, I'll put it back to to this I'll also put this back to controlling step number two and you'll see that this is gonna this point will now go back over here and you can see how it affects everything else that was depending on that step do you see how these other steps that were depending on that one being complete also moved over to the right okay so that's that's how these Gantt charts help each other uh, to help it the program to know how long a certain uh, task is going to take and how much time you have to do it. Um, so what's happening over here is these times are all being calculated automatically. So you say, okay, I, I'm showing up at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be loading out my uh, loading in the, the materials uh, for two hours. So this that tells me, okay, it's going to be ten o'clock before you're done with task one, and then. And then this next step is depending, which is step two. Step two depends on step one being complete. That's this one. And so it's going to, but it has a lag time of 10 minutes. So a lag time basically means, um, like, uh, so let me, let me go right over here. So what it means is that, all right, so if I put this to zero, uh, 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 lag time right here, or a one minute lag time, then what that would do is, um, let's see if I can, yeah, so I just controlled paste it in, in there. Okay. I'm gonna copy this and paste it there. All right, so basically what that's doing is, um, uh, and, and by the way, I, by the time you 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 purchase this uh, spreadsheet, I, I'll, I'll have that little thing fixed where you can select uh, a zero there instead of having to paste it in like that. But uh, anyway, so you can see that if you put that to zero here, what that does is it it brings it right to the start. So this this task two is starting. Um, right at the end of task one. There's no delay at all. So a lag time is basically how much delay you're going to put between uh, starting this task. So if I put it at, say, uh, 15 minutes, you'll see it pop, or you know, even 30 minutes. If I put it at 30 minutes, you'll see it pop right over to here. Let's do that. So I'll come down here. I'll select uh, 30 minutes here you'll see that it, it pushed it over so that's basically like a, a lag time so l now let's look over here at the these things being being uh, updated so this says you arrived at eight you uh, loaded in your materials for uh, for two hours so that makes it 10 o'clock then you can start the next task but you have a lag of 30 minutes so it, it won't start exactly at 10 it's going to start at 10 30. it's going to go for 45 minutes so that'll put you at 11 15. now then uh, the next task is depending on two to be done which is this one so it's going to start exactly at the end time of 11 15. that's when this one is going to start it's going to go for a duration of one hour that'll put it at 12 15. And you can see it graphically over here that, yes, it's going to start right there, right? As soon as it's done, you're going to start that. Okay, and um, but you have the f uh, flexibility to update all these as you need. So anyway, it goes through all your tasks, all the interrelations, calculates everything to, to make sure that uh, and, and basically helps you to know um, 
you know, when certain tasks are going to be done. And it's not always necessarily at the very end here. Like, for example, you can see that this, this task right here is going all the way until 3 o'clock, which is later than 11.40. Um, <coughs> you have this one up here is going until 5.15. Uh, this one right here. Now, this is not realistic. I may have gone through and just hit, you know, some numbers in here just to put numbers in here just for illustration purposes, but I mean, you know, you're not going to be loading out your, your table settings on your centerpieces for uh, five hours, you know, um, unless you have a really big event, but you know, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, that it, not for this event. If, if all these are true, that, that one won't be five hours. That'll be less. But anyway, um, but you can set it up and customize it for whatever your event is. And this is going to take all the math into account and 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 help you to make sure that whatever needs to be happening at a certain time is happening at that time and you can also check with with the person responsible like okay tom is supposed to be here at uh you know 10 a.m and he's supposed to be doing the certain task until uh you know until 3 p.m let me go check and see how the progress is going because if he doesn't get his work done then maybe susan can't do well in this case uh uh, Susan is not depending on on him to be done, but just as an as an example, if she were, then that would be case fourteen, right? That would be controlling step fourteen right here, and so then, you know, she can't start until he's done, and so right now she she can't start until three p.m. And what's that going to do to your end time? Are you going to be able to have everything set up in time for the start of your event, if that's what you're trying to make sure that you're doing, or, or whether you might be using this uh, during an event as well? But um, so yeah, so it just basically helps you to know: okay, uh, is this person doing what they need to be doing at this time? And it's important because if they're not, then the person who's depending on them, they might get delayed, and is that going to disrupt the event? So anyway, this. Um, helps to, uh, you know, plan and execute uh, one day events um, with a lot of complex tasks that have to be managed and, you know, uh, processed and, and watched. And uh, uh, so, yeah, ho hopefully that clears up. And, and I, I'm hope you see value in this and I believe that you do because I yeah I believe this is a you know uh, valuable tool here so anyway I hope you enjoyed that